Well, hello everyone, and a large number of people have been asking me over the past couple of years to review this, the creme de la creme of telephoto zoom lenses, the Canon EF 70 to 300 mm f4 to 5.6 IS USM L for full frame or APS-C cameras, digital SLR or mirrorless with an adapter. Back when this lens was announced, a lot of people had big hopes that this would be a nice, affordable L lens that lots of people would be able to get their hands on, considering its rather standard maximum aperture of f4 to 5.6, not really very bright. But sadly, that wasn't to be, and the lens is costed at a premium price of over a thousand pounds or $1,300. Considering that most 70 to 300 mm lenses cost a third of that price, this thing had better be good. The 70 to 300 mm focal range is telephoto all the way through. It's very versatile for general purpose telephoto shots or travel photography. 300 mm is not quite tight enough for really good wildlife photography of small animals or birds. You really want at least 400 mm for that. However, an APS-C camera will give you much tighter images, the equivalent of 112 to 480 mm, which gives you much more reach, of course. The lens's maximum aperture of f4 to 5.6 is not very bright, so you won't be getting the fastest shutter speeds or most out-of-focus backgrounds here. But the lens does have very efficient image stabilization to help with that, and to help with your handheld video work. Here's some footage at 300mm with it turned off, and now turned on. As you can see, it works pretty efficiently, but it does make some gentle clicking sounds. Well, let's look a little further at the lens's build quality. It's a big and heavy piece of kit compared to other 70-300mm lenses. It's made of metal, so it's very tough indeed, weighing about a kilogram, and it's nicely weather sealed, so it's clearly designed to survive in pretty harsh conditions. The zoom ring on the lens works very smoothly and evenly, as you can see. What bothers me is that it's at the end of the lens instead of close to the camera body, which is unusual. In the field, you tend to use the zoom ring much more than the focus ring, and it feels a bit awkward to be holding the lens at its end as you go. The focus ring turns very smoothly and precisely, and on a clutch mechanism, so you can turn it even if the lens is in autofocus mode. The lens's USM autofocus motor is very quick and pretty quiet, and I'm also glad to say it works very accurately. The Canon 70-300L is a big, tough, heavy monster of a lens, very well built and very efficient, so it's clear Canon wanted to lay a real emphasis on build quality here. But how about image quality? Well, firstly, on a 20 megapixel full frame camera, I can tell you that the lens is quite simply razor sharp across your images from corner to corner with good contrast from its widest possible aperture at 70mm to its widest aperture at 300mm. Very, very impressive. It stays this sharp down to f11, but it gets a bit soft from f16 due to the effect of diffraction. Still, it's basically a perfect performance. Let's see about the more challenging sensor of a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, in this case, my Canon EOS M3. Again, no matter what you do, whatever focal length or whatever aperture down to f8, the lens is very sharp indeed from corner to corner with good contrast. It's a fantastically even and dependable performance. If you stop down the aperture to f11 or darker, then diffraction will be kicking in from there, giving slightly softer images, but that's to be expected. So the Canon 70-300L essentially gives a flawless performance on full frame or APS-C, and in real terms, it does what you'd expect, considering its hefty price tag. Let's see now about vignetting and distortion, as I always do at this point. They're not really a problem if you're shooting on an APS-C camera. On full frame, at 70mm, we get some noticeable barrel distortion and noticeable vignetting at f4. Stop down to f5.6 though, and those corners brighten up nicely. 
At 300mm, that distortion has flipped into pincushion distortion, which will make your subject look a bit thinner. With the aperture wide open, again we see vignetting, but stop down to f8 to make it go away. Or, of course, use peripheral illumination on your camera. Quite an average performance here for vignetting and distortion. Actually, there's a bit more distortion than I expected to see. The lens can fix as closely as about 110 centimeters, another pretty average spec. Thankfully, the close-up image quality remains nice and sharp, even at f5.6. And finally, bokeh. It's not terribly easy to get an outer figure's background with this lens unless you're zooming right in, because of its relatively narrow maximum aperture. When you do, those backgrounds look fairly smooth, although complex backgrounds, like foliage, can actually look a bit edgy, so it's not a perfect performance here. Overall, the image quality from this lens is very satisfying indeed. It's fantastically sharp, and the build quality is simply something else. It's a real brick, like those mobile phones from the 1980s. A lot of professional photographers will be taking this thing out on their expensive wildlife photography trips, although if I were them, I'd prefer Canon's 100-400mm L lens instead. But this particular 70-300mm lens is the best 70-300. It's overpriced, like many Canon lenses, but if you need the best, you need the best, and this piece of kit will perform unquestionably. If you're willing to spend the money, it comes recommended.